Okay, am I here now? Yes, we can hear you now. It was Google's fault. I had to, I, Rumble always makes me verify. That's why I don't use my Rumble, because every time I log in, they act like I'm new. So I had to do that. And now Google had me muted. I just saw that it said I had to do something, so I just hit it and it came in. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's it's a little tricky, especially if you don't use Google Me a lot. And actually, I didn't know we were just, uh, I guess you heard me, but I didn't know StreamYard had 20 hours per month on the free plan. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's not I bad at all. Upgraded. I just upgraded recently because on the upgrade, you can go to, you can actually double stream. You can add yeah. other channels or other platforms. And I might start doing that because YouTube, this week they sent me a restriction um saying i do hate speech and yeah, uh i've gotten that <laughs> i don't you know i don't want to get into that because it's ridiculous I, I i reviewed the the thing and also when you pay streamyard you can keep a big library of stored video so you don't when they decide they want to shut something down you still have it to upload somewhere else yeah, and because uh, I don't have a computer, I don't have a lot of storage space. I keep phones. Yeah, and um, yeah, I I told you about this in the email. I know about those types of things. I, I actually did a big charity fundraiser for St. Jude back in 2018 on YouTube, and um, the Wall Street Journal put a front page article out about it, and then they banned me from YouTube. And St. Jude refunded all the money too. Actually, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm from Memphis, I mean, so St. Jude's based there. I thought I was doing a good thing, but I guess the Wall Street Journal didn't think so. So, yeah, that's how I got banned uh, from YouTube, yeah. actually. Yeah, many years well, ago. Well, you know, you, you run around being the color you are. I mean, of course that's going to happen. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, if I'd have been a different shade, I think I might have gotten away with it. Yeah, that's a fair point. That's a very fair point. Or if I would have had Gabe Hoffman's influence, maybe I would have gotten away with it, too. Um, no, he, He'd have let you raise the money, then he'd have sued you so that you'd have to pay it to him. <laughs> that sounds like one of his tactics. Well, you know, he sued a lot of people involved in his uh, little movie there, an open secret or whatever. Yeah, uh, and, and, and then he couldn't figure out why nobody would put it on the screen. I mean, who wants to invite a lawsuit professional into their business? Well, he really is. You know, um, he threatened to sue me in emails if, if i didn't delete this and do that he threatened to sue me and cited his lawyer now his lawyer's some joke who actually like worked on that movie with him the one he cited to me at least uh but he does that to people all the time go ahead he didn't threaten to sue me because he didn't have anything to sue me for but he was angry because i had actually i had actually spoken to him because he was suing somebody who was really being very very hateful towards me and i knew this person was involved in something really terrible and i said look i am really sick of this what this guy's doing and i noticed that you are in this why don't you speak about this major thing that he was this guy would had been suckered into something and it turned out that it was actually gabe hoffman's people who had suckered the guy in so that he could sue him and it was in the process of me talking to Gabe Hoffman. Gabe Hoffman's response to me was he didn't care what this guy was doing to, or it wasn't even that guy, it was the group around him. He didn't care what they were doing with other people. And I said, well, you know, screw you then. And that should have been the end of it, right? But then in talking with the person that was the defendant in the case, I was trying to figure out what was going on because he kept attacking me on behalf of somebody. And I said, don't you understand who has sicked you on me? Because I recognized this other person in the background. Finally, the defendant checked, discovered I was right, became furious because he realized that Gabe Hoffman's people were involved with setting up a channel that People refer to it sometimes as Lepo's Lizard Lounge, but it used to be called Teenage FBI. And it's not there anymore. And the guy who ran it, um, the snarky little guy named Lepo, I don't even know if he's around anymore. He's kind of dropped out of social media. But 
what he was doing was putting like my picture and other people that he would target he would put them up on the screen and then they would have it was like a, a george orwell hate fest and this guy was in there and so in the process of the fight back and forth me discovering you know because i was thinking everybody was what they said they were if gabe hoffman was was suing somebody for a reason i thought he had a real reason you know i didn't see the game behind it and this guy that was sending me these vicious emails saying things i recognized I said, look you don't know me but i know who's telling you to say that so what's the deal here and then of course i became very close friends with the defendant and then gabe hoffman had a hissy fit he couldn't sue me for anything so he had his lawyer send me an email demanding that i make a video not only publicly apologizing to gabe hoffman for things i had said in my own public videos and and there was twitter at that time too i don't do twitter anymore but i did then and because i had made a lot of remarks about my own interactions with the certain american ethnic community um that um, doesn't like Catholics. They make it very clear that they don't like Catholics like me. Maybe that St. Jude thing, maybe that was part of what ticked them off. But, uh, <laughs> you know, because that's Catholic charity. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. anyway, um, in this, I started to see the game and then I realized what was going on. And this lawyer demands that I make this video that not only would be a public um, apology, but he basically told me what to say like really humiliate myself. And I said, you know, and I, I, I made a video talking about it. It was in one of my channels that got nuked. And then I said, you know, this isn't even from Gabe Hoffman telling me to do this. This is from the lawyer. So I said to the lawyer, you know, I'm going to get you disbarred. <laughs> and he was a Florida lawyer. His name was Dennis Klein. So I, I call and you know, he's a public figure. Can't argue with me about that. So I contacted the Florida Bar Association. Then I discovered that bar associations are set up so that lawyers can sue other lawyers, but they're not set up so that private citizens can do anything about a crooked lawyer or a stupid lawyer. In this case, it was probably stupid. Um, so I sent the copy of his humiliation letter to the law firm. It was one of these big J.C. Penney law firms. And, uh, you know, they got they got, yeah i spoke about it on your last stream i think they they got yeah. um you had a clip yeah. and so i sent the, the thing and i said look this is number one i said i'm not even a party to this case i said i might have been a witness and i think that the plaintiff mr hoffman is now afraid that i'm going to be a witness for the defendant which i'm not i'm just his friend but um it doesn't matter i said th there's so many different ways that this guy should be disbarred and i don't have the money or time to try to do it but you need to know that i'm thinking about finding another lawyer to do it and all of a sudden that guy quit representing hoffman then hoffman tried to hire another lawyer for the same case and she quit right quick on him i'm not sure if she even really was hired if he just claimed she was she quit and then he settled out of court and he runs around telling everyone he won the lawsuit but he settled and what the lawsuit was he was suing this guy for calling him this is where it gets important he was on the face of it gabe hoffman was suing this guy for calling him a. Uh, can i say um forbidden words from youtube here um which were... a, 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 a lover of children <laughs> oh he called okay. him a, he called him a pedophile so sure. yeah he called him a pedophile well this guy is autistic okay that was one of the things that started in all the arguments i started to recognize things because my father has severe asperger's he was really a savant i have asperger's one of my brothers is a musical savant asperger's so i know the patterns when you're talking to somebody with this and this was coming out in the argument plus the fact that I recognized somebody in the background. So it turns out that that's the truth. This guy's a musical savant with, uh, with autism, loves playing games, 
and does the thing people with Asperger's do. He doesn't always distinguish between the rules of the game world and the rules of the real world. So when it comes to the pedophile thing, he's, he, he was going in without a lawyer. And he says he got nothing to worry about. He can prove everything. So finally, I said to him, what can you prove in your own defense? I'm just curious here. He said, well, he called me a pedophile first. And I said, yes, but he's suing you because he says he can prove he's not a pedophile. And it doesn't matter. You're, that's not a defense. That's a confession. You're confessing that you called him a pedophile without any proof that he is one, but you did it in, you're giving motivation. You did it in retaliation because he called you one first. I said, those are the rules of playing a game. Those are not the rules of the law. And then, you know, he, then he talked to a lawyer and um, realized, yeah. And plus in the middle of it all, that letter that had gone um, between, th there was another communication that was between the lawyer and me that went public and Gabe Hoffman put it publicly in his Twitter. And it was a, it was, it was a mess. And then I realized that I, I said, one of the people that you're calling your friend, I said to the defendant, must be working with him. I said, because you shared something and it's showing up in Hoffman's Twitter. And that's when, you know, he, he just got his own lawyer. And then all of a sudden Hoffman announced that they both announced that they won. But basically the case was thrown out. And Hoffman wasn't showing up with lawyers anymore after that. But instead he went into Sewertown and he spent hours and hours on one of the channels that got taken down. And I wasn't asking to have it taken down because I was sharing the videos with other people that need to see what's going on. And Hoffman was on Sewertown for hours and hours, digging up old newspaper articles about everyone in my family, talking about my daughter, misrepresenting things. I was arrested in 1972 in a peace march with 500 other people. It now shows up in the record as a 1972 arrest for disorderly. There's nothing in the police record about the fact that this arrest was along with 500 other people that day, you right. know, in a political demonstration. Plus, so, that's a pretty minor he, charge anyway, right? Like disorderly conduct's nothing. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but I mean, but he goes to Sewertown and makes it sound like, you know, I was a school shooter or something. And he, uh, um, he misrepresents it. And then, you know, he, he, like I say, he goes into personal stuff, digs up stuff. I mean, they really, the, the, the things that they've done to my family are ridiculous. And a lot of it is not just G Gabe Hoffman. When I began to realize that there is, in fact, an organized pro-Jewish, Jewish community movement, an, an organized anti-Gentile movement, okay? And he's very big on that. Because he spoke to the guy Defango. You guys probably know about Defango, right? He tried to recruit Defango, and Defango did a couple of streams talking about this. Um, he Defango he actually paid for him to go out to Florida and meet with him, and he wanted him to help set up something that would be more militant than the Anti Defamation League, because apparently. The Anti-Defamation League was telling Gabe Hoffman to quit telling them to sue people for him. He had to, you know, they were making him get his own lawyers because they were sick of him. Because everything, you know, he would get people like he did to my friend with the pedophile argument. He will, he knows he can trigger you to say something. He's going to get you to say it and then sue you. And so they, they got sick of, of him. He decided he's going to start a proactive organization. And I think he was trying to use me as one of his test cases. And then I realized the guy that I had recognized in the uh, nasty things that my friend was saying in his emails was an army veteran who had been involved with harassing my daughter when she was still alive. And he had been involved with harassing my whole family. This was Massachusetts politics going on. And he was on the actual payroll 
He has a YouTube channel, so he's a public figure. His name is Brian Birmingham. He was a paid staff member of Steve Hassan, the famous anti-cult ex-Mooney guy that shows up on all the Dr. Phil's and everywhere when they want to talk about cults. Yeah, I've heard that. Birmingham huh? was on his staff. We got the proof of it because he was he was at he was in the he was studying psychology at the University of Massachusetts at the same time as my daughter. He was on the Boston campus. She was on the Amherst campus. She was a graduate student. He was an undergrad, but he was a veteran, so he's older. And he was he decided that he was going to come after my family for anti-cult for Steve Hassan. Partly because Steve Hassan already had my family on his target list because one of my brothers back in the night in 1976 one of my brothers was victimized by some priests in a seminary he went he had gone into seminary intending to become a priest himself while he was there he was put through a horrific what was essentially an initiation except that instead of being initiated he told them where they could stick it and he left but he was a broken man and he accepted a huge cash settlement from the Catholic Church. The price of accepting a settlement is it's hush money and they they're paranoid, particularly in his case, because of the way it happened. Um, and he wasn't a little kid, you know, he was he was a college kid who had decided to go into the seminary. So. Um, they 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 police you and i have you know i i am from a, a family that you know, i was supposed to be a nun until puberty <laughs> put the, the kibosh on that <laughs> and I, became, I became a hippie instead but <laughs> and you know we were that kind of family and it was an act of rebellion for me to announce that i was gonna leave parochial school and go to public school in high school that was an intense rebellion in my family so basically what happens is the church finds people who are going to police you for the rest of your life if you've accepted hush money they had one of my fanatic relatives i won't say she's a devout catholic because she she's probably doesn't even believe in god but she's very fanatic about everybody toes the line with all the you know rituals and so on right so um because you know that's 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 life for that you know so she was basically the one who stepped up to to be the the babysitter to make sure my brother stayed silent and my brother confided in me about what actually happened and um so there was paranoia in play and what the catholic church did was hired steve hassan my sister told him that my daughter and I belonged to a cult. My daughter and I were living such incredibly separate lives and not for any bad reason either. I think that when your child grows up, if they're not living a separate life, you haven't raised them right. You know, I've seen she some examples into, of that, by the way, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, yeah. But she went into an ashram and they tried to ask in fact that one of the reasons why Hassan had his guy calling me was they were trying to tell me she went into an ashram and joined the cult. And I'm like, said, listen, idiots. I used to go to that same ashram with her when she was a young teenager and we both studied yoga together. I said, I couldn't do the yoga because I have arthritis, but she loved it. And she went in with my blessings. What what's the big deal? That's not a cult. She's a certified yoga teacher. She was working with a clinic that was doing therapy with veterans. Um, she was going for her master's degree in psychology. She was 34 years old. But during those couple of years before that, then there were other things. I mean, if you looked into some of the videos around me, you know that there were other things besides the church. My, I had family members, you know, in Boston Irish, Boston Catholic. And um, there's a lot of connections going on. And that's the thing. They all use Hassan as a, I won't say a hitman, because he doesn't actually go out and hurt anybody, but his staff is able to 
basically they get family members to kidnap and then deprogram. They tried that with my daughter in 2005. And I had warned her, don't accept me. My sister had invited her to, uh, excuse me, I do get emotional because I don't talk about these things much. I refer to the fact that my daughter was killed. It was not a suicide. But then I don't go into details. And that's why the trolls go crazy. And I don't care because I'm not speaking for them. I'm speaking for the small number of aware and well-positioned people who will look into it and have looked into it. And um, behind the scenes, because they know when you come from a connected family and it's, you know, that kind of situation, a state trooper can't just decide to go up to the university and start arresting people. You know, they, they want to hush everything up and they, he can't go and, and arrest Steve Hassan. He's not going to keep his job. So basically they have to kind of back table it and quietly look into things and it takes a long time but um i got a little i lost my thread here i was okay. talking about but i, I was gonna ask I you did, did gabe so gabe put all that out too like try to drag you know misrepresent oh, things yeah. yeah except that he put it out with lies sure. like like what he did with the arrest of me and now they're saying that now my daughter was number one she's 34 years old she was she was getting married her fiance also died the same way she did, like about two weeks before she did. And it wasn't a suicide for him either. I, his family told me they, they didn't think it was a suicide. Um, and I won't talk about anything about them because that's for them. Sure. I'm not doing their thing for them. Um, but um, the, 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 what Gabe Hoffman did and I think continues to do in different, I don't follow him around to see what he's doing. I don't read his Twitter, but every so often I hear about it. Um, what he did was he, he dug stuff up and gave it to, and he actually is paying. I mean, it, uh, it's speculation on my part, but very well-founded speculation that he is paying a certain person who works with this guy monograph to do things. And she's an ex-cop. And my own police department, a senior officer came by and visited me and told me, said, hey, you know this person? And he named her. And I, I said, oh, her, yeah. And I said, she's a, that, she's a former cop and she's this and that. And he stopped me. He said, she's not a former cop. I said, oh, she's not? She lied about that too? And he said, no, she's an ex-cop. He said, when I say former cop, I mean it's somebody who might be retired. They're in good graces. But when it's an ex-cop, they're not allowed to be doing law enforcement anymore. And she's an ex-cop. And I said, oh. And he said, and if she shows up down here, we're going to arrest her. Because she had been calling the Corpus Christi Police Department and telling them that she was an active detective doing work. And she, and, and she was working with, with um, I, I believe, I have very strong, strong reason to believe. And I'm going to say it's my belief because nobody needs to go suing you for what I say. Um, and you can call me crazy afterwards just to cover your own body. <laughs> I'm crazy, and I love it. Uh, the, um, you know, it, it's like Hoffman has this whole thing going on where he's trying to run his own private anti-defamation league. But Steve Hassan is a Jewish militant himself. Steve Hassan and Rick Ross are the two major... Um, what do you call it, uh, anti-cult experts that show up on every news show whenever anything weird happens. Rick Ross is the one who was uh, hired under the Clinton administration to consult with the ATF and FBI when they did the Waco Branch Davidian massacre. And um, that was his first real job in this profession. But he tells his own life story when you go to his website and read it, that he started out because he was furious that some Jesus Christian, not Jesus Christians, that's a different group, but there's other people, Crusade for Christ. They used to come onto the college campuses and they had somehow converted his, one of his relatives. So he decided to go after cults, particularly independent Christian cults. And 
Hassan has a similar story, how his lovely Jewish family saved him from being a Mooney, which, you know, I, I don't say he should stay the Mooney. They're, they're pretty weird people. But, you know, it's they're both like speaking for their communities to um, represent their communities as an ethnic group against everybody else, which is anybody, any ethnic group has the right to do that. But in this case, they are protected by the government in different ways. By the, they're also protected by this expert culture. And in Hassan's case, the Catholic Church and the Irish Mafia in Boston were using him to intimidate and silence witnesses every time something happened somebody would accuse that person and then he would have his people follow around and basically do all the stuff that social media trolls do except this was even before social media and he did have i mean my sister did do a, a steve hassan do programming thing i did not go i told my daughter don't go to her house there's something going on and my younger brother told me he was there and he was horrified that it was a Thanksgiving dinner and my sister suddenly brought out all this this intervention crap and he my brother got her out of there got my daughter out of there and called me and told me he was so sorry and I said well you know and then when I was able to talk to my daughter they had her convinced that I was part of it it took a long time they had destroyed her and then she was receiving calls i was living in texas she was 34 years old i hadn't seen her for a few years gabe hoffman runs around telling people to say that i abused my daughter that i i was terrible they're now telling people to say that i was molested by my father my father was a wonderful man it was horrible when i tried to speak about what happened to my brother it's when they really started attacking my channel and then taking, they'll take your video down and then they'll go out and they'll, they'll twist what you said so that people remember you said something, but now they've twisted it. They've even done deep fake type stuff and I'd have to be a millionaire to keep suing them. So I said, well, you know, I'm 70 years old. Uh, I'll just let them do it and basically developed a network of people in law enforcement that we could have conversations about this and I show them the different videos with the timestamps and then they start watching not because for me but because it's a mercenary gang that's doing this to a lot of people the other thing I oh I, I skipped over this part and it's very important in that lawsuit the pedophile argument Gabe Hoffman buried something in the lawsuit that when it got thrown out, it was a victory for all musicians. Because when you sue somebody for something like defamation, you get to tell the court, what do you want? You know, how, do you want money? Do you want him to do something? What? And what Gabe Hoffman did was he said he wanted the court to order this guy to shut down his music channel which is instrumental music. It doesn't even have lyrics. And he did not make a song about Hoffman. He called him a pedophile in a Twitter tweet. But Hoffman buried control the music channel in it. And they're always, and now they're using Steve Hassan to attack his music channel by claiming that because his music has meditation and trance work and he's a Gnostic and, and he believes in a lot of stuff with the Gnostic religion, that they're saying that he is dangerously brainwashing people if you listen to his music, which is, it's classical music with pictures, you know, the videos, one he did recently was very touching. A lot of times it's about war and stuff, and it'll show like old footage from Nazi army marching, goose-stepping, and then it'll show bombing from Vietnam, and then it'll show somebody just contemplating a sunset while the music plays that's it i mean it's it's very artistic um very effective if you like that kind of music you you'll find it's very effective a lot of people would rather listen to hip-hop that's fine but it's they've got what they're trying to do is 
use his case, if it had stayed in, it would have been a court precedent to say that if you're sued for something like a defamation argument in a private individual conflict, that your whole creative profession can be put down. And this is a guy who's done major movie background music. He's got contracts with with people in Hollywood. He's had he had Hoffman mess with one of his contracts. Sure. Uh, or I shouldn't say Hoffman, but you know what I'm saying. I mean, he's yeah. not a garage amateur. And it was really, I told him, I said, this is not an attack on you. This is an attack on every musician. If they rise to your level, Hoffman is going to be able to shut them down. Oy they shut it down. Um, now, so uh, Hoffman, we've had, we've had run-ins. I told you about one of them earlier. Um, but why he came on my radar is because he, he's hung around streams like mine, others in this sector, as we call it. Uh, he's financially sponsors a rival stream, basically. Uh, and mm -hmm. so, you know, he made it his mission to try to run me down in public with, with stuff like you said. True and untrue. You know, some of the stuff's true. Um, of course, he spins it and adds his own you know, bullshit uh, onto it. Uh, basically tries to get you deplatformed from places. You talked about getting videos taken down, um, stuff like yeah, that. He's, I'm sure he's responsible for the letter I just got from YouTube. Most likely, yeah, because we talked about having you on. He's watching right now, I guarantee you. Uh, like there's, hi, Gabe. Hi. <laughs> yeah, there's no I'm doubt. still here. You can't beat Cheap Phone Ninja. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's no doubt in my mind uh, that he's still here. Now, uh, you talked about him, uh, you know, in, in your words, uh, setting up like a more militant style ADL operation. Um, you know, there's been speculation that, that he, again, I don't know that for a fact. I can't say for a fact, but there's been speculation that he works on behalf of a foreign government. Uh, and I'm sure you could think okay. of what, what that foreign <laughs> government might be. Um, Israel. <laughs> I can tell you. Yeah. Steve Hansen. I tried to talk to him because actually at one point in my life, I did go into a genuine certified cult. I went in, I was working for a, a, a food pantry that was run by a political group. And it turned out that it was a cult. And then all the stuff that was happening with my sister and stuff, I was just chalking everything up to, well, she's a jerk. And, you know, we're always having arguments about whether somebody goes to mass or not. And um, it, it, it gets funny because her own daughter decided to become a Jew when she got pregnant by one. <laughs> and that, that kind of was funny. But I always thought it was just personal, right? And all the ex while I was in the setting, but then, you know, getting away from there, moving down to Texas and looking back and going, oh, my goodness, you know, these things do come together. And um, what was I going to say? Oh, Jesus. The whole thing with Steve Hassan um, works into that because I'm sorry, I lost my no, thread okay. again. It, it, no, it's okay. It's an uh, emotional topic, but it's not, that's no excuse, but it's the way it is. No, it's okay. But what do you think about the allegation, speculation, again, speculation that Gabe Hoffman basically works for Mossad or oh, for yeah, the Israeli that's government? Yeah, real thing. When I when that was going on, I tried to talk to Steve Hassan because he claimed he was looking into this political cult that I was in. It's it's a cult that um, is called Natal Fed National Labor Federation, and I had been a genuine union steward in the shops, but this was like you know people got mad at me and said, "What'd you go there for? You know that's a front," and I like I was only in it for a few months. But I did try to talk to him, and he wanted me to email with a special email. He wanted me to set up an email on a server that was in Israel. And it was really kind of funny because I was not anti-Semitic at that time. I thought my sister was stupid for being anti-Semitic. And uh, But I was very, I said, this is weird. Why would I want to do that? Because I do, I, I said, no, I'm not going to do that. And then he wasn't answering questions I was asking. And I could tell he was trying to rope me into something. So I just said, you know, I don't 
think we need we really need to talk and that was the end of that but um i was that was way before my daughter died i mean that was gosh that was when i first moved to texas and um i first had a computer so it was it was in the early 2000s and it was very brief contact but he did ask me to set up a special email on an israeli server yeah that sounds about right i wish i still had my old computer it was back in windows 98 and that thing's you know long gone to the dumpster but if i still had it i would actually have that email address that he wanted me to use but i don't have any of that because i started using gmail a few years after that and so i don't have any of those records yeah i lost a lot of my emails too um now, so Hoffman, what else uh, could you say about him? And then I wanted to ask you, you, you made a comment uh, on a video of yours we watched about your town basically getting, well, I, I could let you say it, but you basically getting taken over by Jews, I think is what you said. Uh, hey, Will. Hey, what's up? Yeah, Dingo's here too. He's he's a guest on my show sometimes. Um, did you want to say something, Dingo? Um, I guess, yeah, I, I had a quick question before you go into that. I, uh, I missed the very first part of the interview. Sorry about that. Um, but do we know how old Gabe Hoffman is? I'm just wondering, like, what his age range is. I mean, I would assume like late 40s, but I don't. I don't know. Um, I think you're right. I think that's about his age, somewhere in there. Yeah, I think that that's. But it's hard to say because the pictures I've seen 46. that he hasn't there could be old. Yeah, 46. I see his uh, info right here, actually. So I think I think it's 46. Mm -hmm. How much money do you think he's spent uh, or has been spent on his behalf going after you personally? Me? Yes, ma'am. I, I wouldn't have any way to say um, because all of the stuff he's done with to try to do to me has been through stuff like YouTube trolling. And I know that he is heavily involved. Um, I didn't name the defendant in that, that defamation case. Um, just because it tends to trigger troll swarms. But um, I know that there's been a lot of money involved with that. And I think that uh, he's, I know that he's very closely involved with several other wealthy people. In fact, my friend is what you call a trust fund baby and that whole crowd around him are trust fund babies and Gabe Hoffman just kind of feeds off them. And, uh, um, so I don't know. I I guess the, the short answer is just I don't know. Well, uh, you, you mentioned troll raids. That that piques my curiosity. Um, I I was wondering if about your insight into like their their specific actions. Um, do you know if they would ever do anything like go on a YouTube stream like in mass and then pretend to be you know anti-Semitic and then say a bunch of violent stuff oh, yeah. to get the Have streamer to shut down? Half the people in YouTube that that make the most um, stereotypical anti-Semitic remarks are Jewish. They're LARPing, as they say. And I've corrected them more than once. I said, listen, I said, I don't need the protocols of Zion. I said, I am speaking from actual provable history. We know that there are fights between ethnic groups. We know you've got an Italian mafia, an Irish mafia, and a Jewish mafia. We don't need the protocols of Zion and the, the bloodlines and all this other crazy crap. But the, all that stuff's being pushed because then if you try to actually talk about the fact that Steve Hassan is running a terrorist network, I mean, he's not running it, but he's like covering for it with his anti-cult persona. They say, well, that's all anti-Semitism. And when I spoke about them taking over the towns, they came into Massachusetts in the 1980s. It was really weird because it was a part of Massachusetts that had a lot of summer people were New York Jews. When they, before the computers, there was the fax machine. All of a sudden, everyone was turning their summer cottage into a year-round home and becoming permanent residents, and they didn't understand the town meeting system. 
They didn't understand the democratic system of Massachusetts because New York is an old commercial. In the colonial days, it was not a democratic colony. It was a Dutch business that got sold to some English when the English took over. It was always a, a corporate business. Massachusetts was a crazy pilgrim kind of set up with town meetings and village and we had generations of people and they were literally taking over the schools um th there were attacks real attacks and it, we, we and it a lot of it was them coming after in fact okay this is something i was hoping we could get into actually sure. before dave hoffman cut his teeth you know when he still had his baby teeth yeah. there was a couple up in there's an npr albany radio host in the old days of radio who was also a newspaper columnist in the berkshire eagle and his name was alan shartok and alan shartok and his wife roselle shartok ran the prototype uh education program for identity politics they actually got a federal grant and they were using the great barrington school system where my daughter was and they were running the these racial teach the children about racism things which were horrifying to us because we we know about racism we teach about that at home and we were teaching against it okay i mean they were attacking us when we were, some of us had been down in the South done on the Freedom Summer bus rides to desegregate the restaurants and buses. I mean, they didn't even know who we were. And they, they Roselle Shartok set up the program where you teach the class and so we can't talk about skin color, so we're gonna talk about eye color. And they did a blue eyes, brown eyes, racism role playing game. My daughter became scared. She was attacked by kids. And the, the principal, I took her into homeschool in, for a while, for like to finish out the year in sixth grade because she was blonde. And they started attacking the blonde kids. And this was going on. And it wasn't, and it wasn't racial, it was Jewish because they were actually running that program and they were the shark was writing about it in his newspaper column he was talking about it on albany station of npr and roselle shark was getting written up as some kind of curriculum designing genius and i was with the pto and we were taking them on because we and we got i got my daughter and i both got called anti-semitic i mean she's in sixth grade for christ's sake I was getting called anti-Semitic on the radio by the the uh, liberal network there um, because I had stood up at a PTO meeting and I had said, look, I said, they they because they had planned a Christmas uh, field trip for the kids that was really horrifying to Catholics. It was really, they were going to bring them down to New York City and teach them that Christmas was a commercial uh propaganda thing and they were going to bring them to this toy store that had $500 teddy bears and I made a speech at the PTL meeting that um, what Catholics really believe about Christmas especially French Catholics that they were in, not going to get my child on that and I and she was being attacked because the teacher sent a letter home that the field trip was canceled because of one person's objections which made everyone angry at my daughter and me because that's what the teacher said. But in fact, the whole group of parents were upset. There were several field trips. They were gonna be going, taking the kids in and going to adult activities in Boston. They were gonna take them to a, a play that was an adult play. It was a gay uh, relationship story on the stage and these kids were sixth grade. And so it was a culture war right out in the open. It was on the radio and in the newspapers. I mean, you have to dig through because they bury that stuff. The Berkshire Eagle is owned by a Jewish family, the Stevens family at that time. I don't know who owns it now. But back then it was owned by a New York Jewish family who were running all this stuff in headlines. 
And you have to go through a paywall to get at their old files. So, you know, but if you can pay them the five bucks or whatever it costs to subscribe, I think you probably can get those stories about Shark Talk. You can get copies of his old column. So, you know, I'm not devoting my life to, to collecting and storing up archives of records, but I know they're out there and people who want to and are so motivated can get them. And you talk well, about, um, well, hold on, I'll let you pick it right back, back yeah, up, Dingo, but you were asking about how much money, uh, you know, Gabe, Gabe lives in a $13 million house. I don't know if people are aware of this. Uh, and so when I talk about him, you know, being a financier of the Kano Casino and some of these other shows and throwing a little money around, that's nothing for him. You know, the guy lives in a $13 million house. I mean, there are richer people, but, uh, you know, going around here uh, and buying influence is, is not that hard for him. Uh, or, you know, paying somebody a little bit of money to do something if he wanted to, right? Uh, that wouldn't be that hard for him to do. Uh, now go ahead, whatever you're going to ask. Oh, uh, yeah, I was, I was going to ask, like, um, clearly you have a, a good memory bank of, like, a lot of activities and, you know, uh, schemes that these people have been doing recently. But, like, have you have you let that bleed over into looking back through history and seeing if that's a, a pattern that extends, you know, hundreds of years? Yes, I I know about the bloodlines. I know about all that. I've got, I've got, I've got um, you know, we've got a family tree, and we're all looking you. over our shoulder because okay. they're, see, they're behind all this crap where they're telling people, well, you know, if it's Catholic, well, then you got to go after them because they're Jesuits. I mean, just this morning, someone or yet yesterday, someone was was putting that into a thing. Is like, you know, I was talking about a parochial school and totally unconnected subject but um i forget what it was but someone has to always has to go into the chat with what do you think of the jesuits it's like oh uh, oh i know what it was it wasn't pro school it was um i was interviewing somebody who wrote a book about jesus and gnosticism and so they I all you. You know, so i mean it basically yeah i know about history i know the patterns and the thing is, if you start focusing heavily on those patterns, you lose the focus on the battle that's in front of you today. That's my personal opinion. And I think they love to push people to do that because if they can get you upset about something that happened in the Middle Ages, you're not going to notice what they're doing at the PTO meeting. Yeah, I agree. I, I totally agree with you. I mean, I think it's good to know the history, but to focus on it would just be, you know, like you said, to uh, to do so at the detriment of the current issues. Yeah, I agree totally. Now, uh, so b back to Hoffman. Um, has, what's the last interaction that you've had with him? Uh, and again, you're not the only one he's tried to do stuff like this to, me included. Um but a lot of people, he goes around bullying people. He goes around trying to buy influence and curry favor. And some people think it's funny around our neck of the woods, um, you know, to see a show bought off by this guy. And, oh, it's just funny. And it's just jokes and this and that. But as soon as you take his money, as soon as you're under his influence, all of a sudden you're not talking about Zionism. All of a sudden you're attacking people who are uh, trying to tear them down. You're getting cues from him. He's telling you who to go after, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of his game. Um, but what's the last interaction you had with him um, personally? Directly with him was um, uh, maybe about a year ago when he, I, I wouldn't say directly because I don't respond. You know, I, I will, I tell people, I say, talk about these guys, don't talk to them, you know, so I don't interact with them. But he was on Sewertown, um, about a year ago that that channel got nuked and i think it really i think it's like a self-protective nuking of the channel because the, if that stuff was still there people would be clipping it and saying oh look what goffman was doing here and there um but what he does is he has other people speak for him and just this yes. past week he or yeah maybe less than a week ago he had uh um he has this person, Winter Moon, go around, and he had uh, monograph was on a went onto a, a platform and started screaming and basically blew the whistle on himself. 
because he does a lot a lot of the financing behind monograph is for, it, I wouldn't say it's directly from Hoffman, but it's from wherever Hoffman gets his money. Because I looked up, his, he he owns a, a capital hedge fund company. And I looked it up because those things are, in, they are all kinds of financial web, websites. And I don't really understand all the financial language, but what I found was that it was listed as having no clients. So it's basically a dead in the water company. And you mentioned a, a, an alleged real estate purchase of his. I don't know if you could re refresh the, the record there. Oh, yeah. Go look up. Just you know, Google it right now. Gabe Hoffman, okay. comma, Palm Beach, 60 million. I think 60 million or 80 million. Both of those figures. He bought a small, tiny little beach cottage in Palm Beach, Florida. And I think what it was was he bought it for twenty million, and then the headlines were this Israeli guy comes along. Except it wasn't an Israeli guy. It's Larry Ellison. It was um, yeah. Larry Ellison buys it for eighty million. So the profit was sixty million. Okay, and that was all in the headline. So if you put those figures into Google, you should pull up one of those. And that was maybe. Four years ago, three years. It was about four years ago because no, three years ago. Yeah, it was three because years it was twenty twenty one. Yeah, yeah. His troll friends that were all, you know, attacking me on behalf of poor old Gabe Hoffman, started saying, "Hey, what's a guy with that much money doing playing this kind of game? Has he got something better to do?" So even people who hated me started to look at him, and wonder what was really going on, and he didn't like that. <laughs> Well, and people, if they don't know, uh, I'm, I'm going to tell them Larry Ellison is a co-founder of Oracle. Uh, and he also happens to be, uh, one of the biggest donors, uh, on the G in the GOP. Uh, and so you hear him mention the press. So Oracle is a pretty big deal in and of itself. Uh, but he's also a major political influencer, uh, as well. And you know, you can Google that, uh, he gave money to Tim Scott, a bunch of other people, uh, and he's one of these people that um, they seek to curry favor with. I believe he's also of a certain persuasion uh, as well, a certain heritage there. I don't know. I'd have to double check on that. But um, <laughs> uh, let me see if I can find that real quick. Uh, yes, yes, he is. He is Jewish. Um, and so I'll read this. This is from the Wall Street Journal, my favorite paper, of course. Um, <laughs> Oracle's Larry Ellison buys Palm Beach Mansion for $80 million. Oracle co-founder Larry Ellison has purchased the North Palm Beach Mansion from hedge fund manager Gabe Hoffman, the founder of, uh, uh, I don't know, Accipiter, Accipiter Capital? Uh, Accipiter Ca Capital yeah, Management. It, for, it's for, named after a hawk. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because I was just looking at pictures of his house um, on Zillow when I, when I told you it was worth... Um, 13 million dollars uh and you can easily find i mean this is all public information but uh if you look through the pictures uh and you see the see the living room and it's allegedly for sale now too but if you see the living room there's a giant picture of a hawk uh like above the above the mantle and so i was looking at that and i was actually looking for pictures of hoffman I think I can see him now actually in one of those pictures but uh there's a giant uh painting of a hawk uh, above his above his mantelpiece there, uh, but I'll, I'll finish this. Uh, let's see, a uh, Sipeter Capital Management for eighty million, uh, according to two people familiar with the deal. Uh, above its asking price, half a million above uh, the asking price. Um, oceanfront compound, five hundred twenty feet of ocean frontage, and ultra pricey Seminole Landing neighborhood. Um, let's see, Hoffman bought the main parcel in twenty twelve, so this was eleven years before. For seventeen point five million, and sold it for eighty. Uh, so, so it was less than twenty million. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He bought this score in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, he bought it for seventeen point five and sold it for for a cool eighty, uh, which is what uh, over seventy million dollars, uh, or excuse me, over sixty million dollars uh, profit. Tidy profit, Denise. I would say uh, <laughs> uh, that he made you, there. You can go to 
for my live stream that I just quit in order to get over here because I wasn't watching the clock. I just did a, a, a go around of my place because <laughs> I, I was doing a stream on quilting and somebody was complaining about not having enough room to quilt. And I, I said, oh, this is my whole apartment. And I just sat in my chair and ran the camera around my studio. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, my wife's grandmother makes quilts, and um, that people who can quilt are a very special kind of people, like, in a good way, I mean that. Um, extreme <laughs> patience. It's, it's hard to make a, a piece of art, which is what a quilt is, let's just be honest, like, that, that takes that much time and is in three dimensions, you know what I mean? Anybody can Bob Ross a, a canvas with some, like, watercolor, but to make a beautiful quilt, holy crap, that's, I, I, that's very impressive is all I'm trying to say. Sorry. By the way, weird well, chatter just appeared in here saying some weird things. I, I know that that couldn't be. That's uh, a coincidence. Don't, don't pay attention to that coincidence. No, I mean, it's most likely literally Gabe Hoffman because I've had to ban him out of my chat three or four times. Yeah, he's sock puppeting in the chat. Uh, that's what I think, at least. Uh, he's not very slick because I've said this before. He thinks he's a top Jew, but he's not actually. He's kind of, you called him a street Jew uh, on, one <laughs> of your, on one of your streams. That's what she called him. Yeah, she said he's a street Jew. Crazy. I don't think I think that's what he is because for one thing, I just it's my own gut feeling. It's my opinion, Gaby boy, that yeah. um, he uh, he basically was groomed and sicked on people, you know, because like those like the trolls in Sewertown were saying, what what the heck is somebody with eighty million dollars doing, right. hanging out in troll fights? You know, there's better things to do with that much money. That's what I said. I've said that a million times. Like, what is this guy doing? But when you think about it, you know, uh, it's pretty obvious, right? Like he's, you know, he's, he's trying to, uh, influence, you know, this area of the internet, you know, there's bigger areas, um, but it's very politically active and it's very politically active against Zionism. Uh, and so yeah. if he can go around and throw a few shek shekels around and get in some people's ears and get people fighting with each other and more importantly, not talking about Zionism, uh, then he, he sees that as a W and honestly it is a W. Uh, so that's exactly what he's all about. Denise, in my opinion, that's my opinion. Uh, oh, I know. It doesn't I make think sense. you're right. And and his focus on me is not that I I don't represent a threat to him. I mean anybody who would change their mind about their investments based on what somebody of like me says is crazy because I don't do finances, but I do have the hard history of what we went through in Massachusetts, which is really what the whole country went through. And a lot of it is because of that very fact that I described as being the connected, being a connected family up there. We can start talking about stuff that's going to make sense to people and get them away from the old medieval, you know, stupid fights that they want us to have because they don't make sense today and just if people start looking at, well, this is what happened in our school system, and that that prototype program that the Shark Talks put in proves the direct responsibility of that community because Shark Talk was always doing the um, anti-Gentile uh, speech. Every, you know, and that's one of the things that was going on. Great Barrington was torn to pieces because we were a paper mill town, a textile town. We had creative i mean we, we had really uh, well that's that's where it's just north of great barrington is where the clintons had their wallpaper done for the white house and you can go into that in some other video stream that was the art center and i was one of the people who grew up in that art center and uh, when the that cluster of new york jews moved into berkshire county at that same time what i think happened was that the Irish Mafia began to pull away from the Italian Mafia and re, they refigured their business arrangements because Bill Weld was governor. And Bill Weld was key, in my opinion. He was His things that he did when he was governor was key to bringing in the Jewish Mafia because he wanted to do things that the Catholic Mafias, the Irish, the Italians, and the others wouldn't have anything to do with. And there was a culture shift at that level 
which I know about because of, you know, my uncle being the head of, of a textile workers local. I was a steward in the graphic arts workers, an AFL-CIO union. My, my late brother-in-law was a steward in the paper workers. And my sister was rising in management at GE. And you, we had a civil war in the family because it was like, you know, we saw what was going on. And people who do true crime, like FBI, mafia type of research, you go through the old FBI listings of the Patriarcha Capos and all those people, you can figure out that there is a pattern that's not allowed to come into popular media, but there is a pattern there where Weld brought Steve Spielberg into set up his studios in Pittsfield, Berkshire County just north of Great Barrington, where I was, where my daughter was in school. And she was in high school in Pittsfield. Well, basically, Weld set up a tax break for Hollywood studios. And there was a long campaign in the newspapers about how Spielberg was going to bring Massachusetts, not Spielberg, but Bill Weld was going to replace Hollywood with Massachusetts. And Spielberg was part of it because DreamWorks was one of the first things alongside Pixar to really do a lot of CGI, CGI. So our winter climate, which was always the, the excuse Hollywood had was they have the climate for year round movie production. But with what DreamWorks was doing, you don't need to be outdoors. So Bill Weld brought that in. And when he did that, it was also he also pushed the alphabet soup crowd forward because he was the first I, one of the first gay governors, and um, he, um, uh, th that whole culture shift happened, and Whitey Bulger was controlling the Boston FBI at that point. He was, the, you know the story of Whitey sure. Bulger. Yes. And uh, basically, it was during the Bulger years that the shift happened, so that they could no longer count on a Catholic ethnic reaction to things because the mafia sort of became uh, deculturated, okay? Because when you, when, you, when you took the Catholic background away, there was no longer a unified front on questions of morality, which it's kind of weird to talk about morality when you talk about mafia, but there is a kind of ancient morality there. And when you took that away, it became the liberal secular thing that we have today. By the way, um, there's that's definitely Gabe Hoffman in the chat, in my opinion. Not even, it's not even. There's zero doubt in my mind. What a fucking idiot. Excuse my language, Denise. Uh, uh, I was saying. I just think it's funny that he can't. Uh, an eighty million dollar guy can't. He can't beat Cheap Foam Ninja. <laughs> It is pretty funny. Uh, I was I was telling him, you know, it's obviously is street level. You know, a real savvy operative would never get busted like that. Um, but I'm not stopping, Gabe. I'm going to be talking to everybody you tried to fuck over from now until I'm dead uh, because you made the wrong enemy, uh, and I plan to to keep exposing you for as long as I live, uh, 100%. So, uh, but anyway. Uh, Can I ask another question? Sure, ask another question, then I'll, I'll wrap here in a minute. But go ahead, ask a question. Okay, awesome. Um, so I guess my question will be, and you, you kind of hit it at it earlier, whenever you said, what's an $80 million Jew doing messing around with these like drama streams. But to me, I'm, I'm just kind of wondering if you, what your thoughts are on this. Okay. I kind of feel like Ralph does that these, these spheres on the internet streams, and everything, they're a lot more influential than like a lot of people would give us credit for. Yes. And I think that they do target these, these spheres. Um, and if, if Gabe Hoffman, this, this rich street Jew, will mess around with things like the Kino Casino. Like, what? what's the lowest or highest level, you know, something needs to be influentially wise for them to throw money at it to control it? Like, will they will they try to target a show that gets, like, 60 viewers? Or does it have to be 100? Like, you know, how, how big of an influence they got to be? I, I think it's hard for them to really gauge the influence. I think they're beginning to figure out that social media is a whole new thing. And you can't you can't identify someone as being not influential because they only have 500 subscribers because it depends on who the subscribers are. 
Now, my stuff was getting networked out into other places um, through emails when what would happen is and continues to happen, and I'm not ashamed to say it, even though I know there are people in the audience that really have good reason to dislike police departments because they can be corrupt. But basically, a network of people in law enforcement where I will send them a, 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 an email with a bunch of links to different channels and say, look, this person appears in the chat on this channel saying this. And if you go to such and such a timestamp here, you see them discussing this. And this is where the political channel is. And this is where the hangout and sweet talk channel is. And when we started sending these cluster channel, cluster emails out and having phone conversations, where we're not trying, we're not asking the police to go out and arrest anybody or even check on anybody. We're asking them to notice the gang nature of this. It started to have an effect. And I believe that, well, I know that here in Texas, there have been some things going on that involve the Ater Texas Attorney General because one of Gabe Hoffman's friends had been sending emails around claiming he was able to blackmail the attorney general into giving him information through a FOIA request, which actually, you know, a FOIA request is a FOIA request. You don't have to blackmail anybody, but they like to, you know, they like to pretend they're tough. And um, it's basically that kind of thing because they realize that while somebody like me might have only a couple hundred viewers, I still, you know, maybe 10 of those viewers of the 200 are people who work in offices who are talking to each other about this stuff. And frankly, they can't do any, that's just the nature of the beast. They can't stop people from talking to each other. And they're trying, Gabe Hoffman is one of the people that's trying to figure out how to get the kind of control that they had when the Hollywood studios were the only place you could go to have a, a career. Yeah, and you'd be surprised how many people know Denise, um, or she might not be surprised, but um, her stuff's gotten around. You know, I saw some people in chat who knew you already uh, when we talked about having you on. Uh, and when I pulled it up, they knew some of your stuff. That's how I knew where to look for some of that stuff uh, last weekend when we played some of it. Um, so, yeah, just any, like she said, anything less than full control, they don't like it. Uh, and any outlet out here, it could be 50 viewers, could be... 400 it could be a thousand whatever uh it doesn't matter uh, a guy like gabe hoffman who like i said speculation uh, about who he's really you know working for etc um they don't like any and look just go look at his twitter he attacks people from the from the top on down to the bottom uh and it, it doesn't matter uh anything going against the zionist narrative uh is something that that he and his ilk want to shut down dingo so um i, I don't really think it matters how many viewers? How much money you're making? Um, they want to shut it down. Oive shut it down. It's not. It's, I mean, I say it as a joke, but it's not. Like that's that's how that's how he operates. I mean, go look at his Twitter. You know, I've seen him dox and and try to harass and get fired. Like I said, people from the top on down. Uh, it doesn't have to be a major person. Uh, and if you don't respond to his threats in the in the way he wants you to, which is to bow down and and you know heal, um, then he's gonna go after you and try to scare you and try to ruin you now somebody like me i don't give a fuck uh and it's been done to me many times on a daily basis uh so you know i have that going for me but a lot of people will come to heal right they will bow down because they don't it's not worth the trouble for them or they have a real life job uh, or something like that and they can't afford uh to fight with somebody like him now this is my life so i don't care um but a lot of people do denise so that's kind of that's kind of his game they have to because yeah. that's why i decided to keep fighting because he does go after they do go after the families of the people sure. you know i mean he, one of his minions was on a, a stream the other day yelling and screaming about me and admitted in, as part of he says he had this guy had videotaped uh, a phone call to my landlord and had actually sent a registered letter to my landlord trying to have me evicted. And um, I've lived here for 10 years in this apartment. But um, the, the, uh, the level to which they go is insane. And knowing what I know about the school things and everything, 
they do track that in fact one of the things that gabe hoffman wants everyone to know and make sure that his minions tell everyone is that he will find out where your kids go to school where what sports teams they play on and stuff and he does that kind of thing so i said okay you've killed my daughter i mean i'm not saying he personally did it the gang this gang stuff is why she died and her fiance also died two weeks before she did. I said, I got nothing left for you to take from me. You know, I don't own anything. And that was deliberate. I mean, I'm not saying that I had much choice about being rich because I'm not rich, but I looked at my situation and I realized I had allies around where I am because Corpus Christi is basically a Catholic area. Um, it's also a military and strong base in terms of self-protection and it knows about gangs i mean we're, we're we're we've got the border patrol parked out here sometimes because we are that close to the border people don't realize it but the seashore is the border too and we do have the ocean right here and um so i said i'm in a position where i know i know enough about these people to speak up they can't take anything from me They've even made videos about their frustration. Gabe Hoffman has had them do such background checks to find out if I'm hiding money somewhere. Because his kind of people don't know that you don't need money to live. You really don't. I could be holding this phone under a bridge, <laughs> you know, with a cardboard sign up in front of me while I do it. <laughs> so he what's he gonna do well you got the right attitude but some people like i said and it's not you know i'm not criticizing those people but you know a lot of people you know have a place they can't take it right uh, i don't yeah i don't criticize them either because if you've got kids in school and you've got a yeah. job where you need your pension money in 10 years from now you need to just keep your head low and and watch your back and there's nothing wrong with that you've got to protect your family but that doesn't mean that that you're caving in. It just means you're going to fight a little quieter. And those of us who are free to speak as loudly as we want have a responsibility to. I agree with that. Uh, and when you lost a few things uh, and you no longer give a shit, uh, it can be uh, really uh, a moment of freedom, <laughs> I'll just say. Uh, and, you know, I understand why some people can't, but I'm not one of those people, and uh, you're not one of those people either. Uh, now, anything you want to you wanna leave us with here? Or tell people where they can find you as well. Uh, but any, you know, thoughts here at the end? I also saw Kroll Associates mentioned by my chief of staff. I don't know if you know them or not, but... Um, I could bring that up too, but I don't know. Okay. All right. At least I brought it up, but, uh, tell people where they can find you and anything you want to leave them with uh, about Gabe Hoffman specifically. Well, um, I can be found in YouTube. Uh, my channel is under my name, Denise Matteau. Um, M A T T E A U is the last name to spell it. And basically I stream there, you know, I'm trying to get away from the troll fights. The Valley of the Trolls is getting a little boring, <laughs> but <laughs> I'll stream about sometimes crafty stuff. And lately I'm doing book reviews. So if you know anyone who's actually published a book, send them my way because I had an author on, um, as I was saying earlier, th this fellow, um, his name is, is M H T Kang is actually a Pakistani American and he's written this book called um, Christ Protagonist or the Dethronement or Logos Dethroned. And Logos is how the Orthodox Catholics refer to Christ. Right. So it's basically a book that he's written about philosophy and politics today. It's very interesting. And uh, I'm going to do other books like that, you know, and basically that's what I'm trying to do. And if you want to go subscribe, oh, thank you very much. And wish gabe hoffman a merry christmas <laughs> yeah I'm merry sure. christmas gabe yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, i guess before you go i'd just like to say that uh you're a very impressive lady and, and you don't deserve to have to go through the crap you've gone through with this this street jew but um it's very impressive that you've done so and and kept your your sanity and all that good stuff so it's very nice talking to you and you've gained uh at least one i know a lot more but at very at the very least one new dedicated follower tonight I'll be putting the alerts on for all your stuff. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank well, you. Well, thank you.
And I would have co-signed all that myself too. Uh, thank you, Denise, for stopping by tonight. We might have to have you back on too, and we'll get your channel and link it in the chat. Uh, but thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Merry Christmas. Well, Merry Christmas to you too. And everyone just, you know, stay sane and keep your powder dry. <laughs> yeah, that's a good, that's good advice. Uh, thank you. And we'll talk to you again. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.